smile. We're headed to Macy's Backstage. And did you hear about the new Backstage Scratch Win Smile game? Yeah, everyone's a winner. Right. Make any $25 Backstage purchase now through Saturday, December 2nd and score a Scratch Win Smile game card. You're guaranteed to win a $1, $5, $10, or $25 prize to redeem at Macy's Backstage at a later date. Scratch and win. What's not to smile about? Macy's Backstage. Savings for everyday life. Details at Macy'sBackstage.com. Welcome to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis. Today is Thursday, November 23rd, 2017. Blasting off with some UFO reports. There was a UFO sighting in LaRue, Ohio on August 10th of 2017. The witness describes it as being random flashing of various intensities in one particular small area of sky near Cassiopeia. The witness continues to say this is an edited UFO video, flashes in the sky pointed out. And they also included a description under their video of the raw video. And they seen this same thing in multiple sites around 2012. It makes no sound. The first seconds of his video are just stars. And he has an extensive aviation and aerospace background, enough to know the difference in airborne craft and their flight peculiarities, if any. He goes on to describe, this thing follows no linear path and has only one light that shines at irregular intervals at varying intensities. Often the light flashes bright enough to rival Venus or Sirius, or perhaps even brighter. I know all about Wright Patterson as per Roswell and my gramps used to work there in the 1950s through the 1980s. If it were a small kit aircraft, it would have been low enough to be able to hear like around 5,000 feet. If a small kit aircraft managed to get up to 14,000 or higher, air would run thin. Maybe the pilot is on oxygen, but at least those altitudes and angular separation between each flash is far enough apart that speed required to be in the following flash position would greatly exceed that of a single engine propeller. There is no reason why some pilot would be up above this town in rural Ohio, they put a curse word in there, with no wingtip navigation, which means green and red lights, against FAA regulations. Flashing a single light in a strange manner I thought it may be an experimental military craft of some sort doing an exercise. As often seen uh, when this thing, this is a commercial airliner nearby at cruising altitude above 18,000 feet. But I have seen these flashes with witnesses who also have seen them multiple times from coast to coast for about the last seven or eight years. He states he'll edit the video of this and... uh, He states, I suspect I will be able to film them again soon. And like I said, I will try to do this more in the future. This is the first time that I have filmed it on high def, or at all for that matter. And for the first time, I have ever had a camera good enough to even film anything at night. And I hope to improve my filming skills in the coming nights. I've seen it so many times over the years and made it flash by asking Mm. that I am pretty sure I can get the same result again. My guess is maybe a drone or perhaps it is above the atmosphere over a hundred kilometers which would make it huge but I'm not sure of the altitude. If I had to bet my life on it I would guess between mm, 20,000 and 50,000 maybe. Lastly there are a few remaining fireflies lightning bugs in the area I've been tricked before by perspective regarding UFOs, so I am careful to discern this. Fireflies do not flash as brightly as the planet Venus or the star Sirius. And I've seen these flashes in the winter months and in parts of the country which do not harbor fireflies. They state they submitted a video that it's edited and one is raw. While making the edited video, I missed many things, as Windows Movie Maker does, not to have high def when editing as far as I know. You can see a lot more in the raw video. Pay 
particular attention to the flash at 34 seconds. The object appears more than just a single point of light. I did not move the camera at all and the area filmed is roughly the size of a fist at arm's length. Several flashes occur simultaneously in different locations. I am hopeful that MUFON will be able to improve the video quality. Some as I cannot. Our next UFO sighting comes to us from Agua Doce, SE, state of Santa Catarina, on November 12, 2017. The witness states this is a satellite type light shifting, shining, and accelerating. They describe, I was at a PCH located in Agua Doce, SC, I believe they mean Southern California, photographing the night sky in addition to stars. I observed commercial airplanes, satellites, and meteors. At one point, what I thought was a satellite abruptly changed direction by 45 degrees, repeating this movement with a trajectory in zigzag. The speed was a little lower than the commercial planes. The movement was very peculiar, detachable from any other celestial body. I directed my camera to try to capture the movement. During the exposure time of the photograph, 60S, the object increased the intensity of the brightness and accelerated very fast and then disappearing. Next UFO report. This is a sighting in Bundenbach, Rhineland, Palinate on July 1st, 2017. This is a UFO over Hannenbachtel, Bundenbach, Germany. The witness states, please note that what I've seen was not a plane. I do not have the exact date anymore, but it was a warm summer night and I was sitting late in the evening, I guess around 10 p.m. or later, in my background with a cup of tea. <laughs> it was a lovely warm summer night, no clouds. I was looking at the clear sky to watch the stars. As suddenly in the distance, a bright light appeared. I immediately thought I should make a wish because my first impression was this is a falling star. But then I saw it did not go down in a straight line. The round object was in the distance. Difficult to tell the actual size because I do not know how far away it was. From my point of view, it was around the size of a penny and seemed more like a round object. It went from my right point of view in a constant speed, but descending and disappeared from my point of view behind the village of Budenbach. <laughs> Interestingly, there is a huge national park there called Hakenbachdal. Nearby, 10 kilometers away, is the small Frankfurt Hahn Airport. And also, we do have a military area known as Chupenbung Splatz Baumholder. But this is 50 kilometers in the other direction. It seemed to me that this object knew what it was doing and very securely landed in the middle of nowhere in the national park or the enclosed fields. Unfortunately, I did not write down the time and the day, but I can only state this was not a plane. Living near an airport, I know how planes are looking during flight and landing, but this was something else. Now for a blast from the past with some ancient history. There are a number of tales mentioned in Native American tribes about tall and strong red-haired giants, which inhabited the Nevada region of thousands of years ago. In the stories, they are described as cruel cannibalistic and extremely barbaric race of humanoid giants. This Native American tribe was called the Paiute, and they had a name for this race of giants called Sitaka. In northern Paiute, this means tool eaters, T-U-L-E. Since, according to the legend, these giants arrived from a distant island, 
by crossing the ocean on the rafts constructed using the fibrous tool plant. Lovelock Giant Skulls In the 16th century, Spanish conquistador Pedro Siza de Leon in Conricas del Peru finds a story about the origin of the South American giants. According to the story, they came by sea in rafts of reeds after the manner of large boats. Some of the men were so tall that from the knee down, they were as big as the length of an ordinary fair-sized man. <laughs> According to the legend, this ancient tribe of giants waged war against the Paiute and all the other tribes in their neighborhood. The war was dreadful for the native tribes, and on the eve of their annihilation, they joined their forces all together against the Sitaka, therefore managed to lure them inside a cave. Once they got them inside, tribes started a fire at the entrance of the cave, which caused all the giants to suffocate and die. The Entrance of the Lovelock Cave The entrance of the cave was sealed off by the tribes until 1886, and then John T. Reed, a mining engineer, intrigued by stories of native tribes, went into the cave and although he could not dig by himself, he spread the story. Sadly, the attention was caught by a company established by miners David Pug and James Hart, and due to the fact guano deposits were discovered inside, they started excavating the valuable resource in 1911. But in that process, any kind of artifacts that might have been discovered was almost certainly overlooked or lost. Nonetheless, after the exterior layer of guano was mined, fascinating objects started to surface. This prompted a proper excavation being conducted in 1912 by the University of California, followed by another one in 1924. Reports informed about a huge number of artifacts acquired many of them being completely astounding. Inside the Lovelock Cave Probably one of the most remarkable findings within this cave was several 15 inches long sandals that revealed indications of being used. Allegedly, other extraordinarily larger items were recovered but have since been secured away in museum warehouses and non-public collections. The only piece of evidence that can be witnessed at present is an enormous palm print embedded on a boulder inside the Lovelock Cave. The Lovelock Handprint The second excavation that took place in the cave exposed many other disturbing discoveries. In 1931, Based on an article posted in the Nevada Review, Minor, a couple of huge skeletons were found buried in a dry lake bed near Lovelock, Nevada. The extra large remains measured eight and a half feet, respectively, ten feet in height, and was found on them was reddish hair. Lovelock Mummies there are numerous speculations circling around the scientific communities that these vicious giants could in fact be the biblical Nephilim, the forsworn offspring of the sons of God with the daughters of men. If this happens to be correct, we can presume that these mummies will probably be hidden from the public in order to keep this history secret. Not surprising. Now, creeping into the paranormal topic, a most haunted family. A witness writes, I am pretty sure I am actually the only person in my family who does not have a personal ghost story. I find my family to be very intelligent people that would not make this crap up. But it's also hard to imagine something that you yourself have never experienced, you know? So, here are some of their stories which are pretty darn creepy. 
My mother lived in a haunted house when she was very young. They feel that this was more than a spirit in the house. Apparently, the house had a colored history. Once my mother woke up in the middle of the night and a dark figure was messing with the items on her bedside table. She assumed it was my grandmother and asked her what she was doing. A voice in her head told her, go back to sleep. And she... Smile! We're headed to Macy's Backstage. And did you hear about the new Backstage Scratch Win Smile game? Yeah, everyone's a winner. Right! Make any $25 Backstage purchase now through Saturday, December 2nd and score a Scratch Win Smile game card. You're guaranteed to win a $1, $5, $10, or $25 prize to redeem at Macy's Backstage at a later date. Scratch and win! What's not to smile about? Macy's Backstage. Savings for everyday life. Details at Macy'sBackstage.com did. The next morning, she asked her mother what she had been doing in her room that night, and my grandmother confirmed that it was not her in there. They considered their parents' room, I believe, to be the most haunted. Once my mother and uncle were, I guess, having some sort of endurance contest and were hiding under the bed covers. They could hear something playing with a vacuum cleaner, and my mom just bolted, leaving my uncle to suffer alone. <laughs> he finally springs out of the bed and runs and literally dives off the top of a rather steep stairway and then proceeds to float to the bottom of the stairs, where my grandpa just happens to be waiting with open arms. They all swear there is no way he could have been able to jump all those stairs. Another time, my mom was kind of a tomboy and was outside getting beat up by some neighborhood boys. And she looked up at her house and could see what she believed was my grandpa. Just sitting in his study window, just watching. She couldn't figure out why he wasn't helping her. When she finally got inside and confronted him... He swore up and down that he hadn't been in his study all day long. Apparently, they had babysitters that would run out of the house in the middle of the night because of the scary things that happened. <laughs> in later years, when I was around 10 or so, my mom worked at a local restaurant after closing and cleaning up the place. It was always rumored that the place was haunted, and she had so many scary experiences that she eventually wouldn't even go alone. So my stepfather started going with her and experienced some of the craziness himself. She would put up all the chairs on the tables, turn around briefly and turn back, and they would all be back down again. She apparently, the ghost's favorite game, was running in and out of the large metal door in the kitchen. One night, it kept happening over and over again until finally my stepfather put a tall metal bread rack in front of the door. A few moments later, they heard a loud bang and went to check. Something had run into the door so hard that it left a dent from the door hitting the bread rack on the other side. Ooh. Ugh. The only other one I can think of comes from my older sister. She lived alone in an old apartment complex, also rumored by many to be haunted. She says that she was washing her face in the sink one night and looked into the mirror to see another face behind her. She said that she was calm and told them that she didn't mind sharing the space as long as they left her alone and didn't try to scare her or anything like that. <laughs> wow, that would not be cool for me. Next, photographic evidence. The witness states, I am a mental health therapist. One of my schizophrenic clients said he was seeing a girl in his room and he said she was talking to him. We believed it to be a hallucination as he was living alone. The doctor I was with decided to challenge his delusion and had him take a picture of her so we could, quote, meet her. <laughs> the 
Well, during the next visit, he brought a picture. And yes, she was there. To our astonishment and horror, there was a picture of him on the couch with a strange, creamy, ghost-like image of a girl hovering behind him, shrouding him in white-like wings or hair. Very light in color, but subtle, shimmering image. What was eerie was seeing him sitting on the couch with his head down, very depressed looking. She was literally haunting him. All of our jaws simply hit the floor. You could hear a pin drop. <laughs> Everyone examined the picture, and we could tell it was real. Dude was very low functioning and could not have shopped it. Crap got real. We were haunted. The doctor, in utter amazement, knew medication wouldn't treat this and said, I can't help you with this. You are going to need to see the clergy for this. <laughs> I love the honesty there. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> Next paranormal story. The witness states, I woke up one night to a loud screeching noise, similar to the screech the Nazgul make in Lord of the Rings. The entire room was flashing rapidly in bright colors. My computer turned on for a split second, enough to get the fans rattling, and my computer screen had a static on it. The entire ordeal was over in less than a second. I still don't know if it really happened, or if my brain was just playing tricks on me. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> Next, the witness states, okay, this may take a bit of doing, so bear with me. Army base, Soest, West Germany. A still, dark autumn evening. Must have been warm because it was the kind of temperature you don't notice. Me, 13, and a mate, 15. Just dosing around before I had to go in. Behind the flats where we live was a green area with a play area. Only one street light, so it was very dark compared to our street, and the well-lit main route through the camp, which was about 80 to 100 meters away from where we were walking. No traffic, nothing. It was never busy, and this was on a weekend, so literally no traffic and no one out, and about as far as we could tell, which suited two teenagers just fine. Bear with me. This is important. So we're heading between our respective blocks of flats and into the darkened park area, and we stop dead. On the main road, moving right to left, was a figure, vaguely person-shaped, but undulating and waving like cloth underwater. It glided along the middle of the road. Based on what it obscured behind it as it moved, I'd estimate it to be around 8 to 10 feet tall. But at the very least, it was larger than average man size. This shape, this thing, was not walking. There was none of the slight up and down motion of walking. It just glided smoothly at a fast walking pace, I'd guess. And it was black. Not someone wearing black clothes. Black. It was a hole cut into the night. No reflections, no shadows or shades. Just blackness. It seemed like a lifetime as I soaked this detail up. In reality, it couldn't have been more than two to three seconds. I whispered, Do you see that? My friend in a whisper replied, Yes. And the freaking thing changed direction towards us. The last image I have before we broke and ran was of it rising up as it came over the curb. This is what makes it real for me. This is something 
that had mass, that obeyed at least something of the physical world. Mm, good point. It moved from the brightly lit road into the same darkness in which we stood. We broke and ran for our lives. Back onto our street and into my mate's block. The freaking thing then bolted back to his own home, leaving me wondering how the heck I was going to get to my block. <laughs> After a while, the fear of the repercussions from my dad for being late overrode my fear of what might be out there in the night. So I ran, eyes straight ahead, the ten or so meters to my own front door. I was in too much trouble for being late to ever say anything when I got home. Sometimes when I'm walking and the night is warm and still and quiet, I think about it and wonder what I'd do if I ever saw it again. Run away? Or face it down and maybe solve a 30-year-old mystery? Honestly, I just don't know. <laughs> wow, truly, truly fascinating. So many people have these unexplainable events, paranormal, UFOs, anything and everything that encompass mystery. And they go hand in hand. Mind blowing. And our final strange story comes from this witness who states, when I was five, I lived with my grandparents on a farm that was built in 1912 because my mom had joined the army while she was single, and the army won't let you have a kid without family. The original owners had been shot, killed, and buried in unmarked graves behind the barn. Years later, someone poured concrete over the graves. Over the course of the three years that I've lived there, every single night, I would hear dishes by the sink rattle and be thrown against the floor. I'd also get pushed multiple times and I used to play with this small kid that I guess wasn't real. I would play tag with him. Oh, wow. Well, you guys, thank you so much for listening to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis. Be sure to check out UFO Headline News Dot com to see all of the articles that we discussed and shared here and to get the links. And also, be sure to visit HeidiHollis.com and TheOutlandersComic.com. Remember always to keep informed and inspired. Have a great rest of your day. We're headed to Macy's Backstage. And did you hear about the new Backstage Scratch Win Smile game? Yeah, everyone's a winner. Right. Make any $25 Backstage purchase now through Saturday, December 2nd and score a Scratch Win Smile game card. You're guaranteed to win a $1, $5, $10, or $25 prize to redeem at Macy's Backstage at a later date. Scratch and win. What's not to smile about? Macy's Backstage. Savings for everyday life. Details at Macy'sBackstage.com.